kickoff to a 16 week um, boot camp. Uh, kind of set the precedence here as we get things rolling. Um, I'm going to share my screen here in just a second. Hopefully, all of you can can see my screen. Um, So let's see here. All right, so we got that going. We've got a participants. You can chat with me throughout the course of today. I'll answer your questions in the Q&A and or in the chat. I believe you can actually chat with any of the other attendees that are on today's webinar. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to do is if you can see my screen, please do me a favor, raise your hand. Let me know that you're out there. Put a quick message in the chat as well while you're at it. Want to make this thing as interactive as we possibly can. This way we can have some fun together. In a virtual, socially distanced world, this is what Do Your Live looks like in 2020 and into 2021. Uh, we made the big announcement this past week that in order to be able to keep our people safe, you safe, our attendees, our speakers, our sponsors, um, we are going co completely virtual this year. Not a huge change for us, by the way, because of the fact that we've always delivered some form of online content. The one thing that we're actually taking away is any of our in-person networking events. So thank you, Richard, Jessica, Larry. I appreciate you all for dropping on by today. Um, this kicks off 16 weeks of webinars. You do not need to re-register. You'll be in, sent an email each week as a reminder of what the next topic is going to be. Oddly enough, next week, we're getting things started this week, but we will be interrupted with Thanksgiving next week. So we'll only have our live uh, show at 11 a.m. and then resume uh, the following week. That will be Hillary Smith and Christina Denham talking about Instagram and professional development. So it's an exciting one for you to, uh, to check out. In any case, what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about lead gen strategy for 2021, what I'm doing, what I'm doing with my clients, give you some case study examples, um, and hopefully you'll be able to walk out of here with some tactical things, tactical items that you can implement in your marketing in 2021. You can ask questions to me throughout the course of today's webinar, um, and I will gladly do what I can to answer them. Our agenda, first and foremost, we're going to talk about product marketing. That's right. Uh, we're going to get into your... Uh, what, what you have to offer. Geography, that's an important one. I feel like this is Jeopardy, right? Uh, exploring new verticals, getting technical, getting tactical, and then the technical uh, component as well. So let's get into product marketing. Obviously, um, product marketing is, is an arena that I think most people are kind of overlooking when it comes to their lead gen strategy in 2021. A lot of people are looking at Tactically, what can I do? Is it a call campaign? Is it a webinar? What am I going to do in order to be able to generate leads for 2021? And I think before you do that, I think you have to take a step back. Um, product marketing typically in most or big organizations has always been referred to kind of upstream marketing. Uh, organizations get split in their marketing uh, orgs. They go upstream and downstream. Upstream tends to focus on product, product development, uh, markets, analyzing the market, working with the downstream team to hear what the market is actually saying, and then developing product messaging and things of that nature that downstream marketing takes into activation. A lot of you are in small to mid-sized businesses, so you don't have the luxury of having these huge marketing teams, but you do have the luxury of kind of owning what the product or solution or service set is. So first and foremost, the one thing that I did heading into 2021 um, is that I kind of took a look, um, and this isn't just for me, this is for my clients as well, of how we're currently doing business and what we do to generate revenue. And from there, because we're obviously in this much different situation where we've got uncertainty in the marketplace, the pandemic is not ending obviously anytime soon. And even if it does end, end tomorrow, people are still somewhat have some scar tissue that's been built up. So what product or service do I currently have to offer that I can bring to the marketplace in the current environment? And that's really what my focus has been on for the past kind of month. Um, uh, Mike is on from the Rich Center for Autism. One of the things that we did 
uh, with the Rich Center. They're a nonprofit that relies heavily upon fundraising in order to be able to fund this, fund their their um, their school uh, for autism. So one of the things that we we recognize and kind of give ourselves credit for is that our product or service with our events typically were a lot of in-person events and we just we had the same events but we what we did is we decided to deliver those virtually and still put money behind the fundraising from my perspective the product and service that i offer is obviously a marketing conference a print publication that relies heavily upon uh, distribution into retail environments, which we obviously know they're under distress. And then the third component is that I provide marketing uh, agency consultation management services out to small to mid-sized businesses. Um, in addition to that, I looked at saying, okay, so we took, we, the pandemic has obviously impacted our ability to be able to deliver two of the three things that we do. So really trying to ramp up the marketing services side of the organization in order to be able to not just survive, but thrive. Um, in addition to that, we also decided that we'd have a technology play in 2021 that we'd offer our clients and act as a reseller marketing tech technology. What you need to do is you need to look into your portfolio. What do you currently offer to your client base? And in addition to what you currently offer, what can you potentially bring to market in a very rapid amount of time? Um, most people, and, I, and I, I'm going to hit on this someplace here or other. The other thing that I, I will tell you is that as you look at that product or your service line, um, most people are always focused on the net new business of the world. And one of the things that I, in addition to the net new world is focusing on your existing client base and in the most genuine, authentic, on, authentic way possible is how do you expand the services that you currently have with your existing customers? So we'll get into that 80-20 principle later. Um, other questions to ask, you know, very basic business questions. What problem are you solving for with your product or your service? So in any new business, you should be asking that question. Hey, I got a great idea. What's the problem that you're solving for? And so as you look to bring a product or a, a reinvent yourself to a certain extent, what are you solving for? And really drill down into thinking about the current situation from a pandemic perspective. So um, not a stretch for Do You Alive to deliver online virtual content. We've always done that. Um, but the way that we're going to do that moving forward in reinventing that is obviously with a weekly webinar. How quickly can you deliver that product and bring it to market is going to be another key ingredient to this. Do you have a lot of time? Um, and then what's the development process going to look like as well? So these are, these are the things that I'm thinking of. These are the things that I'm working with my clients and thinking of. And you, gotta, you obviously got to be thinking about what is your product or your solution set from a product or service perspective. Questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I'll take them in the q and Be glad to answer anything that you have. Um, I do have one question in the Q&A. Looking good. Thanks, Larry. I appreciate that. Um, so the next thing that you have to, at least I'm looking at, is geography. So one of the challenging things, and I think that the, the most of our, our community base, do yo stands for do Youngstown. So I, I really believe, and when I look at my statistics, the majority of the audience that we've built up over the course of the time that we've been pushing content for four, going on five years now is a Youngstown, Ohio base. Um, so Youngstown, and then take the region and build out, you know, obviously Ohio. The Ohio, Ohio economy right now is under a lot of distress. Um, you know, we've, we've got a curfew that's been imposed this past week. Cuyahoga County is on a non-mandatory stay at home. It feels like a soft quarantine if you really think about it, right? We've pulled our kids back out of school, um, in, at least in my school district. So what I've also been focused on is how can I deliver my products and services to another geography that is currently open? That might be difficult for some of you that have a brick and mortar business, but like if you're in retail um, right now, there's a ton of opportunity with Instagram lives and Facebook lives to be selling your product almost in a QVC type sense. Um, 
if you are, you know, again, I'll go back to the, to the nonprofit world with the Rich Center. One of the things that we, you know, again, heavily relied upon is the Youngstown economy in order to be able to support the center. But with a virtual event, we've, tear, we've torn down the walls, if you will, and the web is a very democratic place. And what it's done is that now we are seeing people with the Youngstown diaspora of people that have left the area and or have a tie to autism. And because we're delivering the virtual events, we're, we're seeing more of an uptick from people outside of our world that, that's giving us an opportunity to be able to raise funding. And by the way, you could go to the Rich Center. Um, I should put that in there. There's a, a, a shameless plug for them. Uh, it's a very good cause. We just did Rock the Rich Center um, lip sync battle. And it was a really cool thing. And we're, 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 we're still auctioning off items from that. Um, but so look at your geography patch. Right now, I'm talking to people in Colorado, Oklahoma, Dallas, Florida, and Georgia. And what they've said to me is that they're going like gangbusters and they have been for four, five, six months. Um, there's not quite as much of the impact on those states and those regions that other regions are experiencing. And, and I don't mean to be, uh, I don't want to sound uh, like I'm not sensitive to, uh, to the situation. We've had our own uh, challenges, uh, you know, and obviously two thirds of my business has been wiped out because of, of, of COVID. Uh, but from a pure, purely a survival perspective, um, I'm looking at the world much more broadly than, uh, than just the area. So if you've got something, a way to kind of take it and flip it on its side or on its head, um, definitely look beyond your borders. Uh, look for states that are, are open and doing business. Third tip, new verticals. So what new industries can you take your products or services into that are recession and, and, and uh, pandemic proof? Um, the best analogy that I can give to you is that I provide marketing services, consultation, agency type services. I, I act as the director of marketing for, for businesses, typically in the small to medium sized business. And th I don't mean to make this, this isn't a commercial for, for me or for that. But what I mean by that is that I can go out and I can try and find retail customers, bad idea. I can find restaurant customers, might be a decent idea. Like restaurants are still open for, for, for carry out and take out. But the one areas that, that are obviously thriving in this environment are, are industries like healthcare, for instance, is typically um, a recession-proof type of, of business. So whatever product or services that you're delivering today in, a, in manufacturing or into healthcare, into retail, into um, you know, uh, consumer product goods, what, whatever that is, where can, if you're a restaurant, can you take your restaurant business and figure out a way that you're going to focus on healthcare? Or if you're in healthcare, is there a way that you can take, um, if you're in senior living, is there a way that you can take that and, and potentially um, um, launch that into a new segment of like home healthcare? So looking at that, looking at new verticals, where can you take your products and services to and find a vertical that is, is, not, is, is not going to be as vulnerable as the one that you're currently in. I don't know why I put the Kung Fu guy up there, but I feel like karate is always a very tactical um, thing. So you got to get ta tactical. So once you figure out your product or your solution set, where are, you going, where are you going to focus your geographical efforts? Are you going into a new vertical? How are you going to get tactical with what you're going to do? I'll go down to bullet point number three right away. Um, webinars, webinars, webinars. And in a B2B environment, I can tell you for the past decade, that is one of the strongest content plays for lead generation that you could possibly have. And you can slice and dice the, that in a lot of different ways. You can feature subject matter experts, you can feature clients, you can feature prospects, um, you market it, you, you advertise it through email, through social media, you record the content, you repurpose it. Um, it's a fantastic way to build market share. 
I've been a, long, a believer for a very long time that B2C environments can also be doing webinars. If you're the local butcher shop, um, if you are a restaurant tier, I can kind of come back to that. If you're in health, you know, healthcare, um, you know, in, in a B2C environment, webinars, you could be educating your audience and engaging them in, in a lot of different ways that will help for you to be able to build um, your audience. That and live streaming. Um, you know, it's really odd. The big complaint you hear in non-pandemic times is that social media and smartphones are pulling us apart. We're always staring at our phones, but really it's the only thing that kept us all together. And, um, you know, figuring out your live streaming strategy tactic for doing interviews with, again, customers, clients, prospects, um, putting them out there, uh, giving away value. Um, I can't think of, you know, right now, tactically, some better ways uh, to build audience between those two ways. Um, virtual tours. So, you know, another client of mine, um, full disclaimer, Crow's Cabinets, they, they do residential kitchens, baths, uh, remodeling, they do commercial casework, architectural, um, custom storage, it was prime, a lot of it's in healthcare as well. Um, virtual tours. You can go out and you get a photographer and basically they'll 3D Matterport a home for you for a very nominal amount of money so that you can do the virtual tour. You could uh, simply hold your camera up and, and walk around uh, and show your operations and, and give people an insight to, to what you're doing. Um, however you can reach your prospects and your clients virtually is a tremendous opportunity for you to win. I like the idea of creating, and I, I worked backwards on this kind of purposefully, but um, the Las Vegas effect. So once you get into my ecosystem, I, I want to make it difficult for you to find the door on the way out. And what I mean by that is you come to my website, you take a look at a page, you maybe download, you watch a live video, you then leave me. And now I've got my Facebook and my social media advertising, my Google advertising set up. So now that I'm going to consistently show you advertisements, put the pixel, uh, Facebook pixel on your website, set your ads up on Facebook so that you're targeting people that have visited your website, um, watched the video, interacted with your social media. So you'll continue to show them content. Not only that, upload your current client list, up, upload your prospect list, and then set it on a lookalike audience. Facebook has a fantastic artificial intelligence, machine-based learning that's basically going to go out and it's going to build an audience based upon what you tell it to build upon. And because of that, you'll have an awesome opportunity um, to not only target people, but then retarget them as well with, again, Google AdWords and Facebook ads because it takes frequency. You got to continually put your content in front of people, make it something that is delightful. Now, now, you know, look, tactically, you've got promotions, you've got different things running, whatever that is, but you have to get the content in front of them. And you got to want to make them stay, you know, mind share is very difficult to grab. So the Las Vegas effect is, is tactically the, the thing that, that you need to be looking at. Again, um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to uh, take those. You can put those in the chat. You can put those in the Q&A. I appreciate everybody for dropping on by today. Um, we are going to be at this for the next 16 weeks with two interruptions, Thanksgiving and uh, in the holidays. So I think I put the bear on here because technology can be a bear. Like what is, you know, what's your, what's your tech play? What's your tech stack? Um, looking like in 2021? What do you currently have? So we're coming down the stretch on the year, taking an audit of, you know, do you have constant contact or MailChimp as your mail client? Do you leverage a social media tool like a Hootsuite or a Buffer? Um, do you leverage a third-party tool like AdRoll um, for your Google Ads, uh, Google Analytics, Google Search Console? Like what are you utilizing? And as you take that audit, what can you condense into a marketing automation software? Um, one of the things that we've done is that we, we've been a HubSpot shop for a couple of years now. And we've recently switched that out to 
uh, a new provider called SharpSpring that integrates both a marketing automation tool and a CRM tool. And it gives us the ability to be able to scale our marketing um, with nurturing campaigns. It gives us a lot of intel and insight on how people are interacting with us. Um, and then obviously it has a, a CRM solution, you know, that's a part of it. And I, in, in, in this day and age, one of the reasons why Do You Live continues to exist and thrive is because the velocity of which marketing changes on a day-to-day -day basis with the technology that's involved is such a rapid pace. It's an amazing thing to have to try to keep up with it. Um, marketing at its bare bones, storytelling, uh, value propositions, those sorts of things are always going to remain very consistent. Um, that doesn't change. Uh, solving people's problems, you know, whether you put a SWOT analysis or a SMART goal in place, but the technology in which we deliver the message at this point changes on such a rapid basis. Look, you know, uh, 15 years ago, we had radio, TV, newspaper, fax, billboard, you know, ads on the side of buses in order to be able to tell our message. Now, now, now we have derivatives of derivatives, meaning that like Facebook's not only got a wall, it's got video, it's got streaming, it's got stories. And you, you know, Instagram has the same features. You've got uh, uh, ad opportunities, both in Google um, and third-party placement. You've got video, you've got pre-ad, you've got post-ad, you've got RSS, you've got email, you've got text message, you've got social media advertising. Like there's so many different opportunities that are out there today to keep up on them. It, it becomes a challenge. So marketing people are no longer just the marketing people that come up with the message. There's a data scientist um, aspect. There's an IT aspect. I can't tell you how many times I'm working with a client and their email breaks and they ask me to fix it because I'm the digital marketing guy. Uh, so so what does your technology stack look like? What are you investing in? Uh, that's an important facet in 2021. Um, the next thing before we get into uh, the live Q&A session um, is at GE Healthcare, I had overall responsibility for a billion dollar healthcare IT portfolio uh, as lead gen efforts. And we broke up the business into two categories, net new and IB. IB stood for install base. So I tend to still use that language, uh, existing customers. Most businesses that I work with, um, even including my own, um, in, in Do You Live, I, I, would, I would say that everybody on here right now is an existing customer. And whether you signed up and, you know, everybody got in for free today, but you're paying, you know, you're paying with your time. And I appreciate you all obviously being here. So, you know, I want to try and use this time wisely and bring you value. But the reality is that, you know, I have clients that I, I provide marketing services to, uh, some of them which are on this webinar today. Um, and I have, um, you know, all of you part of the Do You Live community that I consider to be clients as well. And when I look at that, I want to look at it in a very genuine way. Like I look at anything that I do and I want to bring value and I don't want to sell you basically stuff that you don't need. But for those of you that do need that, be, that I built up the trust and earned that from you, I feel it's an obligation, you know, as a client to not ignore you. First of all, um, all of you in my, my email database have needs, have wants, have problems that you need to solve for. And so therefore, hopefully I've earned the right at this point to at least be in the conversation to help solve the problem. Um, so look at your existing customer base and don't ignore it. Um, that's first and foremost, like during this pandemic, if anything, you know, reaching out to your current client base, checking in on them, not selling, listening, asking them what they need, you know, uh, are they doing all right? Um, I actually had a client call me this past week um, uh, I had a COVID test and it came back negative, but he, he actually got COVID. He called me and asked me how I was doing. And so, you know, that meant, obviously meant a lot to me. And really the reality is this call should have been the other way. I should have been called, but I, I didn't realize that he, he, he had it. Um, 80, 20 principles been around in business for a very, very long time. 
Um, 80% of your business comes from 20% of your audience. Um, so make sure that you, you know, we all need net new business, um, you know, but at the end of the day, um, 80, 20 principle, expand the wallet share of your existing client base. So if you have clients today and you're working with them, what does five, 10, 20% of an additional service or product that you can provide to them that solves the problem that they potentially would be looking elsewhere. And maybe they didn't even know it existed. Like a lot of you might be on today and, and think, Oh, well, you know, Dennis does do you live. I didn't realize that he does marketing. And, and so maybe you didn't even realize that, that I can solve some of those problems for you. Look at your existing install base, align your products and services, even if it's a new one. So, um, Complete Pest Solutions is a client that sponsored Do You Live. And one of the things that they do, they continue to do is, you know, they'll come and remove rodents and secure your house of pests. Um, one of the things that they introduced, though, was a, a, a vir, I'm going to, I hope I say this right, the vir, vir, virology, which was a basically a virus side spray that they could come out and they can spray your home. Um, obviously in, in the current situation, um, getting your home sprayed, not in commercial, but residential to prevent vi the spread of virus was an important thing. So they looked at their existing customer base of who they currently service, you know, on a monthly basis to come out and they spray your home for cockroaches and spiders and all that sort of thing. And they said, well, you know, for an additional X amount of money, you know, we can spray your home for this virus side. And so Figuring out your product and your solution set, looking at your current customer, the, a good thing that you can do um, in technology, we would call it a roadmap discussion. So we'd basically go into our, our customers and we'd have a roadmap, one to three year conversation as to what you're looking to do. And we would align our solu solutions to help resolve for that. So go to your biggest fans, find out what they need, find out what they want. Um, and if you're the person that can solve the problem, then, then do it. Um, so that brings us down to the end of week one. Uh, we'll have a hiatus next week because of Thanksgiving. I wish all of you and your families very safe. And happy Thanksgiving. Our virtual sessions will continue the following week with Instagram, Hillary Smith, Christine Denham. I want to thank you all for taking time out of your day to register and be, be here for this, uh, this webinar. I hope that you found the information valuable. Um, I have a new website, it's DennisChiraldi.com. You can go there and you can find out all the amazing offers um, and things that I can, I can do uh, for you and for your business. I appreciate you all being on here today. Um, I am, again, I'm taking questions. So um, if there are any questions out there before we end today's webinar, and at the end of the conclusion here in just a few moments, um, uh, there will be a survey. I would love for you to take that survey. Let me know what you think. Good, bad, or indifferent. Um, I want to hear from you. I value your input, your feedback. Um, if there are no questions, we're going to end today's webinar, which has been recorded. We'll make it available on demand along with the deck as well. Um, cool. All right. Listen, um, 16 weeks of free content. Thank you for signing up. Invite your friends to come on board. We'll have a different speaker every week, moderated by me. And uh, again, thank you. Uh, thank you for your support. I hope, again, that you found this content to be valuable today. Thank you very much for, for dropping on by. We'll see you.